Hello and welcome to the Invictus Games. It's day four. Yeah. Uh, we're already halfway through our little stay I in the know. Netherlands. Look at the beautiful sunset. And you know what? Today we've had a chance, haven't we, to try some of the activities here in the park. So Techers. we did sit in basketball. Oh, she's a natural. Yeah. Uh, volleyball here. This is the Team UK <laughs> coach, Richard, uh, showing us how it's done. And uh, not bad. Eh? Yeah, that was good fun. We played with some children, didn't we? And then we tried this, the recumbent bicycle, which you obviously meddled in. Oh, don't, don't talk but about it. But it's brilliant because the children can come, and adults, and they can try these activities and really understand what it's like to be a competitor. Yeah, and this park is free to access as well, so everybody is welcome to come along and have a go. Absolutely. Now, today, our focus shifts to swim in at the Het Hofbad pool located just outside the park. Could Team UK captain Rachel Williamson turn the silver medal she won in Sydney into gold? Yes, also hoping to keep her cool and make her family proud with swim team captain Sally Reynard. And here is her story. I was always into my swimming as a kid, whether it would be the sea or a swimming pool. You can forget whatever goes on around you. It takes you to another place almost. I've always used my sport to make me the positive person that I can be. And I was still able to take part in various sports throughout my military career. In 1997, I joined the Air Force as a logistics mover, which involved loading aircraft, whether it was freight, people, vehicles. I loved it. Just before Christmas in 2006, I was out in Camp Bastion in Afghanistan, and the first aircraft of the night came in. I'd gone over to the forklift truck and before I knew it, the door of the forklift got blasted into the back of my leg. I remember waking up in, in the hospital. Then I looked at my leg. It was extremely swollen from top to bottom and I couldn't put any weight through it. I knew I wasn't badly injured. I just needed that recovery time to get me back into the swing of things so that I could get back to doing the sport that I loved. And it was during that time that some of the treatment that I was receiving from my knee was aggravating my hips. And they found out I had problems with my hips that were going to need surgery. So my recovery process suddenly became a lot longer. I had my RAF medical review board in 2010. And I went in there full of hope thinking, yep, they're going to let me go back to, to taking part in my sport. And I walked out of there being told that I was no longer allowed to do any competitive sport and no contact sport. And I felt my world just go boom on me, like my world had collapsed. It took away part of me. I eventually left the Air Force in 2014. My life then became centered around being a full-time mum. A friend of mine had taken part in the Sydney Games. I remember she came up to me one day, she goes, you need to apply for the Games. I needed a, a challenge in my life other than just being a mum. So I went along to the um, 2019 Invictus Games uh, trials in Sheffield. I took part in all the um, swimming events and managed to um, <laughs> win them all. <laughs> I remember speaking to the girls each night and they were, Mummy, we are so proud of you. It was an amazing feeling to be back competing. The Invictus Games is an amazing tool for making you become that person that you want to be again. And the most important thing is that I can make my girls and my husband, the proudest that they can be. Well, Sally really is such a positive person, isn't she? And she loves to challenge herself. But this is the thing. Her category is really competitive. She finished fifth and sixth in her first swimming races, which were freestyle and backstroke. Yeah, but breaststroke is her yeah. favourite event, and that was what was coming up next. So Liz Johnson and Matt Chilton will be your commentators for this one. Here's the lineup for the women's ISE 50 meter breaststroke final. Sally Renard swimming again. This time she races in lane number five. Take your marks. Two lengths of the pool. 
Sally Renov with a good chance. Her heat time was pretty impressive. She's up against the pressure of the Australian Taryn Barber, who's been superb all afternoon. But Sally Renard is in good shape as they approach the turn. Sally Renard of the United Kingdom got a busy program at the Aquatic Centre, but this is her best chance of a medal. And we can see there a great turn from her, that underwater pull out now. She's coming up and it is Taryn Barber of Australia that's in the lead. Sally Renard currently in second position, but going well is Emma Murphy of Australia, also the other yellow cap closest to us. And Sally Renard is closing the gap on Taryn Barbara, stroke by stroke. She can't quite get there. It's a silver in the end for Renard as Taryn Barbara takes another gold. Great performance from Sally Renard. Silver medal in the Invictus 50 meter breaststroke final. The gold once again to Taryn Barbara of Australia. There we can see the great start, pretty even off the start there, all of the competitors. And that was really where Sally Renard gave herself the best chance. But it is Taryn Barber, who's a great freestyle sprinter. She won that in Sydney in 2018. And we can see that she's now transferred that speed to the breaststroke as well. Prince Harry on his feet, enjoying the uh, atmosphere, cheering alongside the Australian contingent, who have witnessed yet another gold for Taryn Barber. Taryn Barbara wins the gold, the silver to Sally Renard. Emma Murphy takes the bronze. Here's the lineup for the men's 50 meter freestyle ISB final, and it features in lane one 54 year old Spencer Bull swimming for the United Kingdom. Thank you, Mark. Final of the men's 50 meter freestyle ISB. At the bottom of your screen, in lane one, Spencer Ball. Expect the pace, however, to come from the Hawaiian Garrett Kawada and potentially the Italian Antonio Arricchio. Yeah, Kawada there getting the best start. He was the competitor that used a dive. We can see there a touch turn, losing a bit off the turn there, but Kawada was almost two seconds clear of the rest of the field after the heats this morning. Expect a tight battle for bronze behind him, and also chasing him down now is Oricchio of Italy, one lane up. Kawada gets the gold, Oricchio the silver, very tight between gold and silver, and it looks like the bronze medal has come from the Ukrainian, Ivan Lepeka from Ukraine getting the bronze medal and that brings out plenty of applause around the arena but the gold goes to Garrett Kawada of the United States of America the retired Air Forceman from Honolulu in Hawaii well Kawada was pushed more closely than he would have been expected to experience after the heat swims this morning but he will be delighted to add a gold medal to the medals he's already won this week in the athletics competition garrett kawada gets the gold for the united states of america with antonio Ricchio the silver for italy and ivan lebecca the bronze for ukraine with spencer ball coming home in seventh position Here's the lineup for the men's freestyle ISC 50 meter final featuring in lane five from the United Kingdom, the 42 year old Bristolian Richard Gray. Thank you, Mark. Final of the men's 50 meter freestyle ISC featuring in lane five, Lieutenant Commander Richard Gray from the Royal Navy and Gray has made a promising start, Liz. Yeah, you can see that two-arm stroke there from Gray at the top of that picture that we saw coming into the turn just behind pre-race favorite from this morning, Isaiah Staley of the United States, who you can see there for that underwater shot, interestingly swimming with his arm strapped up because he has no use of that arm, so he doesn't want it to drag through the water. And we can see that single arm freestyle powering him into the finish. And Staley gets the gold for the United States of America. Richard Gray swims home for the silver for the United Kingdom. And it looks like uh, Roberto Coma of Italy getting just in time for the bronze medal as the gold and silver medalists celebrate their Invictus Games achievements together. Yeah, as they got off from the start, Richard Gray gave himself a great chance down that first 25 metres, but it was the swimmer from the United States who got the better of the turn and then propelled into the finish. Isaiah Staley, the former Navy SEAL, gets the gold for the USA. Lieutenant Commander Richard Gray from the Royal Navy 
takes the silver with Roberto Como of Italy swimming into bronze medal position. So the next race is the final of the men's 50 meter backstroke ISC featuring in lane three from the United Kingdom, Ben McCoo. McCoom here in with a real chance of a medal. He qualified fastest from his heat, third position by 11 hundredths of a second. So the battle for bronze is definitely on. Yeah, Geert van Tover from the Netherlands and Chris O'Brien in uh, the Australian colors in lanes five and four respectively. The two men likely to stand in the way of victory for Ben McComb, who is swimming in lane number three. Major Ben McComb serving in the British Army from North Yorkshire. It's a perfect spearhead as we hit the turn and there's nothing to separate the two athletes in lane four and five. A real battle, stroke for stroke for that gold medal, but the battle is on for the bronze medal. They're stroke for stroke too. Chris O'Brien touches just the head of the Dutchman. It's gold for Chris O'Brien, silver for uh, Van Tover, and the bronze for Ben McComb. Ben McComb of the United Kingdom has got the bronze medal in the final of the ISC men's 50 meter backstroke. I'm not sure he knows it yet. I don't think the results have come up on the board to be confirmed in venue, but what an exciting race for gold and silver there. We can see just how close it was. And then the battle that unfolded behind, and it was McComb who managed to get that touch and live up to their promise from the heats this morning. Confirmation of victory for Chris O'Brien, the silver to get Van Tover, and there's that bronze medal for Ben McComb of the United Kingdom. Ah, uh, big congratulations to Ben and the lovely thing, isn't it? Yeah. Now, Ben's son, Sab, Seb. Sab, Seb is seven and he loves swimming and they've really bonded over it. And now he really understands his boy's passion, which yeah, is fantastic. Yeah, it's really lovely. And he's also got another son, Archie, and, and he hopes he inspires him too. And nice. yeah, he will be. Right, well, we'll have more swimming in a moment uh, featuring Team UK captain Rachel Williamson. Uh, but it's not just the union flag that's been waving out here this week. Uh, the support for the 17 nations competing in the Netherlands, it has been unbelievable at swimming pool and all across the park. We can hear now, can't we, cheering yeah. of that? I think it's the rugby. It's yeah. also the first games for Belgium and South Korea. And as we've already mentioned, Team Ukraine have made it too. But as Steve Brown discovered, while the teams taking part mean business, they also do love a bit of friendly cheer and banter as oh, well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So how does it feel to be hosting the first Netherlands in Victor's game. Yeah, it's special and it's, it's, it's great. It feels like a, like a big festival. We are a small country, but uh, now and then we can do some, uh, some big things. Hi, I'm Fred. Nice to meet you, Fred. We have no idea what we're up against, so maybe we're going to crush it or maybe we will be crushed. We don't know. We will see, we will see. Resistant Red! Anyone here doing the rugby? Yes! Yes, now yes. we're talking. <laughs> There is not a different language in sport because the sport has the same language for all people. It's amazing looking at the different teams, the different countries and their different attitudes. Yes, everyone wants to come here and enjoy the atmosphere. But some are much friendlier than others. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! Probably looking forward to beating the UK in the rugby. <laughs> you can certainly take the Australian out of Australia, but you can't take that attitude away, can you? That's right. So your commander, so how are you going to lead this team? The most important thing is not about winning, it's about being a family as we are here as a one big Polish family. I just spoke to Australia and they can't wait to try and beat Team UK. And then I come over to Poland and you say, look, we all just want to have fun. It's brilliant, yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Different teams, different atmospheres. A gift for you <laughs> from uh, Team Italy. This is our... <laughs> Italian team. Oh wow! And uh, in the with double face, there are some sports. The sports. That's amazing. Thank you so so much. I did not expect a gift. That's so kind. Thank you. Oh, 
Well, we saw Carla the other night as yeah. well, didn't we? And what a lovely gesture. Well, that's the other nations, but Team UK's spirits are high too. Yeah. Uh, they're led by Rachel Williamson. And before we see her dive into action, here's why swimming at the Games means so much to her. When I'm swimming, I feel like the world stops. Everything goes quiet. Don't have to think about anything. Don't have to worry about anything. And it's just me in the water. I had very high expectations of myself from such a young age. I was eight when I was thinking about nationals. I was 13 when I was thinking about Olympics. And all my friends went to the Olympics and it was my turn to go next. But I just touched that wall a little bit too slow and my opportunity was gone. That disappointment I felt for so long, I hid it from my family, I hid it from my friends, and I can still see myself in that race and thinking, why didn't I swim that little bit faster? When I was a medic in the Royal Air Force, I was representing the RAF women's team playing rugby union. I went into a tackle, and at the time I just sprained my right thumb and it's now got so bad, I don't have any movement in my hand and it's slowly gone up to my shoulder. Getting back into it, it's just proved to me that it doesn't matter how many limbs you use or what your injury or illness is, you can use sport, it is adaptable. And that's exactly what I've used with the Invictus Games. I just want to finish, get to the end, and know that I gave it my all just from having those dark times to going out and representing my country that I always wanted to do and have that Union Jack on my hat in front of my parents. I just want to smile at the end. That's all I want. You can see, can't you, how important the games are to her. So let's see how she got on. And will she be smiling? The women's 50 meter freestyle ISC features just two swimmers, Kerry Tessier from Australia and Rachel Williamson swimming for the United Kingdom. Take your marks. The final of the women's 50 meters freestyle ISC for competitors with mild arm or leg impairment. Rachel Williamson at the top of the screen in lane five. Kerry Tessier from Australia in lane four and Williamson at the turn. Yeah, Rachel Williams, uh, they're using that underwater phase really well. We can see that butterfly kick that she was doing from that shot there. And she's really waited in a heat swim. She didn't have many heat swims this morning, so she's been waiting for these finals. And as the captain of the team, she'll be looking to get UK off to a brilliant start. Yeah, and she's going to get the gold comfortably, the gold medal in the Invictus Games to Rachel Williamson from the United Kingdom. The first of what could be several medals in this uh, swimming final session for Williamson. And lots of applause as Kerry Tessier comes home for silver for Australia. Rachel Williamson wins with a time of 36.41 seconds. Take your marks. Final of the women's ISD 50 meter freestyle. Lisa Johnston of the United Kingdom in lane four. Kelly Leonard of the UK in lane five. And the pace is coming from Kristen Morris at the top of the pool, the retired C-130 Super Hercules pilot. And at the turn, it is Kristen Morris who's in the lead, but Kelly Leonard of the UK trying her hardest to hold on. But actually now we see Morris start to pull away. She'll be glad to have a race here because we saw her earlier in the week in the track events where she was competing with the men. It's going to be a tight finish, but it's gold to Kristen Morris and the silver goes to Kelly Leonard. Leonard takes the silver for the United Kingdom. Oh, it's very tight for the bronze here. And I think the bronze just goes to Lisa Johnston. Lisa Johnston just coming home. Tight finish, but she gets the bronze. You can see there just how much it means to her. Great swimmer. Kristen Morris led from start to finish, but a really strong finish there for Lisa Johnston to sneak that bronze medal. And you can see just how delighted she was with that swim. Kristen Morris takes the gold for the USA. The silver to the United Kingdom's Kelly Leonard with Lisa Johnston, also of the UK, taking the bronze. Take 
Away they go. It's a rematch of the earlier 50 meter freestyle final. From the United Kingdom in lane five, Rachel Williamson up against Kerry Tessier of Australia in lane four. And it's another storming start from Williamson. These two competitors are very evenly matched in terms of their impairments. Both have one arm with significant inhibitance with shoulder rotation not present for either athletes. And we can see from that great underwater shot just how much Rachel Williamson gets off the turn. She uses that underwater kick very, very well indeed. A nice flat head stroke as she comes into the finish. And it will be gold medal number two for Rachel Williamson. She touches several seconds ahead of Kerry Tessier. A second Invictus Games gold in the pool for Rachel Williams of the United Kingdom. She adds the backstroke to the freestyle she won earlier. And there she is to encourage Kerry Tessier over the final few meters. These two competitors are going to become very familiar with each other over the course of the final session. Lots of head to heads for them. Gold again to Rachel Williamson of the United Kingdom in a time of 41.53 seconds. So it's the third head to head of the afternoon between Kerry Tessier and Rachel Williamson, this time in the final of the ISC 50 meter breaststroke. Take your marks. Away they go, two lengths of the pool, breaststroke this time. It's 2-0 in terms of previous races this afternoon between these two. And that's a superb start again from Rachel Williamson. We've seen Rachel Williamson build over in Victor Schemes' performances back in Sydney in 2018 and now here at The Hague. She's getting stronger and stronger. She has such great starts and turns. She will see that push off the wall using those legs effectively to get a good kick. And we can see her breaststroke. We can see that single arm stroke that she's using. She's opened up quite the gap on Kerry Tessier of Australia and it is the black hat of the United Kingdom that's coming in to the five meter mark. It'll be a third gold medal of the afternoon. A brilliant day's work for Rachel Williamson, who is the Invictus champion again. This time she claims the 50 meter breaststroke title. Kerry Tessier working hard to get to the end of her swim and once again Rachel Williamson is there offering encouragement over the final few yards. Tessier gets it done but it's Williamson's gold again. These two competitors are a great example of what the Invictus Games is all about. Rachel Williamson the experienced competitor really showing her strength and support to Kerry Tessier who's embarked on her first Invictus Games and we can see the bond that's being created between the two. Confirmation of Rachel Williamson's third gold medal of the afternoon, winning this time with a time of 48.37 seconds. Well, Rachel's third gold was particularly special as this one was presented by Prince Harry Poolside. But there was yet more racing for Rachel as she moved up to the 100 metres freestyle ISD final taking on athletes with less severe impairments over the longer distance. Rachel started really strongly, taking an early lead over the American multi-medalist Kristen Morris, but there was a thrilling finish to come. Now the question will be, can she hold on? She's had a busy programme at the Invictus Games, as have many of these athletes, and we can see here now, it is Kristen Morris of the United States clawing her back in as we go down the length, but then it is once again, Rachel Williamson getting the better off the turn, and it'll be a very tight finish as we come into the final 10 metres. Kristen Morris has taken the lead for the first time in the race, and it looks like for the first time this afternoon, Rachel Williamson will be beaten as Kristen Morris surges ahead to take the goal. Brilliant finish from Morris. It's another medal, but it's a silver this time for Rachel Williamson. And uh, the race continues as the... Uh, bronze medal is awarded and it will go to Lisa Johnston from the United Kingdom. Lisa Johnston gets another bronze medal. In any event, you have to play to your strengths, but there, Rachel Williamson knew that she was going to be the one that had to get up and get out in front, and she did. She attacked it from the start. 
and right up until the closing stages she was in the lead but it was Christine Morris of the United States who's had a superb Invictus Games across the board who came through to take the victory. Kristen Morris gets yet another gold medal. A brilliant swim from Rachel Williamson, but she'll have to settle for the silver. And it's another bronze for Lisa Johnston. Well, fresh from the pool and the swimming finals, we're joined by two of Team UK swimmers, Rachel Williamson and Charlie Dye. Welcome both. Good to Hello. see you. Hello. And my goodness, congratulations. <laughs> Look, they've got the bling. It's yeah. amazing. So, Rachel, we, you spoke earlier on in the programme very candidly about your disappointment about not getting to the Olympics. And, you, you know, you were kicking yourself saying, why didn't I go a tiny bit faster and touch the wall? But you didn't make it. How does it feel now, though, to get the medals? to wear the flag oh i've just stopped crying it's Aww. um it just feels amazing i this is my olympics to me and yeah. to say that i finally managed to represent my country do the sport re find the new love of the sport again and the medals are just a bonus again i just wanted to smile at the end and just um proved to myself that I can do it. And Jackie and Alan and your brother Tom looking so proud as well, which is lovely. Yeah, and you're not just representing your country, you're obviously out here as the captain as well. And it's so clear, you know, how, how much you care for each individual in the mm -hmm. team. We're halfway through now. How proud of them are you? Oh, the team are doing absolutely amazing. I could not be any more proud of them. They're smashing their goals. Just getting here is an achievement for us after the pandemic. Mm -hmm. and. They're just having, we've got such a good atmosphere and yeah. great banter and everyone's having such an amazing time. It's just great to see smiles on their faces and dancing and singing all the time. So it's great spirits. Yeah, but you're also a superb captain. Your energy is unmatched. Yeah. Now then, Charlie, <laughs> Rachel says you're a very good friend. Her left-hand man or right-hand man, it's not left-hand man, is it? No, right-hand no. man. <laughs> yeah. And you help with the swimming cap on, which, let's face it, is a tricky job. Yeah. Now, how did you two become so close then? Well, I reckon it was we we know through a mutual friend, um, who is my wife's best friend. Uh, we met at a New Year's Eve party, um, and then, fortunately for us, our journey just brought us together through the Invictus Games. And Laura's on the team as well, um, and we've just bonded through that. And not been known to each other, but we did choose the same sports to compete in as well. Um, it wasn't planned, <laughs> although it may seem it. Um, but yeah, we we chose the same sports, and then. Just going through that process together, ended up kind of liking her. She's all right. <laughs> <laughs> For the record, Alex puts my swimming cap on as well. OK, <laughs> that's good. Before he gets in the shower. In the <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, I mean, you live with anxiety. And knowing where you've come from, to be here at these games, to be such an integral part of the team, to be sat here sharing your story, I mean, how much... Can you believe the difference? Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. It's a pinch-me moment. Um, yeah, so I did. I do have, uh, or did have, a lot of anxiety. Mm -hmm. I've worked through it. I don't get as much now. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, coming to actually be sitting on the one show is just—it's it's amazing and a, and a massive step for me in my process, which is halfway through, I'd say, for now. I love your commitment to the one show. This is actually the Invictus Games program, yeah. but we know <laughs> that's you mean. because you're here. You think we love it. It's part of it. I'm the, off the one the common show. thread. <laughs> God, it's so brilliant to have you both in. We, we chuffed to bits for you with the medals. Yeah. And it's lovely that you're sharing your stories because we're having a lot of feedback, yeah, aren't we, from loads. people watching at home, feeling so inspired and feeling that they can now share theirs because yeah. of your bravery, not just in competing, but by talking about it yeah. as well. So thank you so much, guys, for coming Sorry. in. All right. Well, one of the most popular competitions here uh, at these games is the wheelchair rugby. Oh, it's absolutely brilliant. It's Up a free-for-all, basically. Very exciting. I can't wait for that. Right, well, we'll have the final tomorrow. Uh, but the big question is, will Team UK take the gold? Join us at 7pm on BBC One. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.